All right, guys, buckle up because this is a little bit of a rant video. It's about open offices, cubicles, and having to go to an office in general. I was doing a little bit of uh, Google searching for a thumbnail, and then I noticed one of the cubicle pictures linked to an article called Cubicle Culture. I was like, what? So let me just show you what cubicle culture is really quick. This article right here is called Cubicle Etiquette 101. Don't discuss personal or confidential matters. It's very easy to be overheard. Don't barge into cubicles. Don't shout to colleagues over the top. Walk over to the person. It's like we're it's like we're in fucking kindergarten and they're just telling you basic things that are just basic manners. Remember, you're on display. Keep your personal appearance and desk neat. You're in a fishbowl and you need to impress your coworkers. These can block out extraneous noise. So these can block out your loud ass coworkers. Turn off audio sounds on the computer. Check with people around you to see that your radio is not disturbing anyone. Next one below this. Don't own a radio. <laughs> Candies attract visitors and lollygaggers. You aren't Betty Crocker, so don't feel like you need to feed the masses. It's nice to be nice, but do you really need the interruptions? Face away from the opening. If you can't face away from the doorway, get your walls heightened or train yourself not to look up at everyone who walks by. Yeah, that's that's easy. Just train yourself to not look up when people walk right past. Train yourself to just ignore the dude who walks right past your cubicle and just crop dust the shit out of you. You might love your leftover garlic seafood stew, but smelly foods can be bothersome. Okay, so here's a solution. Here's a solution for all of this. How about you just don't go into the office and you do what you want and you work from home? There's this, these cubicle etiquette 101 things shouldn't even exist because you shouldn't have to go to a cubicle. And if you do got to go to an office or you like going to an office, great. You go to your office if you want that social interaction, great. If you can't work at home and you can't do stuff at home because you get distracted, you got wife and kids, or you just find yourself playing games all day, that doesn't mean you still have to go to an office. You could go to a coffee bar or you could go any number of places. Go work on the beach, go somewhere else. But none of this should have to exist. This could be solved by just not having cubicles. Basically, if you if you don't have a hands-on job where you have to be there, like to do something on the equipment there or be on location, there's no reason to have to go. You'll hear a lot of this bullshit from managers and company owners. You'll hear a lot of this, well, it's a lot more uh, productive for me to just walk over and tap somebody on the shoulder and, uh, you know, get help when I need to. Okay, well, that, first of all, Mr. Asshole, that is very selfish of you to just go ahead and interrupt somebody's flow state because it could have took them a really long time to get in that moment. You, you could have been like, oh, put, putting the pieces together, like slow-mo, all the pieces are coming together and it's just about to snap into place and the dude taps you on the shoulder and like all that just poof, disappear, gone. If you tap me on the shoulder and I'm in flow state, I'm throwing hands. And so this whole productivity argument about being able to just talk to people whenever you want to is really selfish. This is why we have Slack. Please send me a message. I'll look at the little thing down there. It's gonna pop up. It's gonna make the little Slack noise. I'll notice it. I'll look down. Oh, okay, well, he needs help. Let me just get to a good stopping point. But no. Here's another article on Career Coach, 15 Rules of Etiquette for the Cubicle by Washington Post. Be respectful. Oh, sorry. I. I, I never heard that before when I was in kindergarten. Don't take or borrow things from a coworker's. Who reads these articles and goes, oh yeah, well, I was about to steal my coworker's stuff. I mean, the only thing I can understand about stealing stuff from people's desks is if it's like someone gets fired and you want that extra monitor or your chair doesn't lean back for some reason and his does. You know, if he's not coming in on Monday, I'm about to have his chair. Avoid trying to talk to someone who is on the phone. Why would you do this anyways? This is basic human etiquette. You don't walk up to someone who's on the phone, like outside in real life and start talking to them. Well, this doesn't apply to cubicles. This is just not being a dick. Don't peer over the top of your cubicle wall. Look, if I wanna creep, you bet I'm gonna creep. This shouldn't have to be an issue. Just give me an office with a door that I can close. Yo, what's that? Oh yeah, I didn't hear you. Like who does this stuff? Watch out for strong smells. Oh, trust me, there's gonna be someone who is, there's gonna be somebody at the office who has strong smells, whether that's from them or their food or the food that they ate last night. <laughs> Your cubicle is a place of work. Don't use it as a dressing room. Who put, okay. Avoid loud music. I just wanna put like some, some ASAP Ferg on. And just be blasting that in my headphones and then accidentally put it on speaker. Be, oh yes, 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 that, uh. I'll have that done on your desk by five o'clock. Watch out for offensive pictures. Okay, so here's something super subjective. What is offensive? If you're offended by what I have on my desk, I can't control that, that's on you. That's your fault for being offended. Oh, I have a, a picture of my girlfriend and it's us at the beach and she's got a bikini on or whatever and you're offended because that's too much. 
I can't control that you think that. That's not my problem. When in doubt about what to have in your cubicle, think about whether you would be comfortable having the president of the company see in your cubicle. I don't think the president of the company should have that much free time to be looking in your cubicle and judging what's on your desk. I think if you have to go to an office, you should have something with no windows and you should be able to close the door and people shouldn't be able to just barge right in either. And then after that, you have cubicles. And then after that, we have the worst of the worst, which is open offices. Open offices are touted as the brand new best thing. And there's only a few people that like open offices. The really excited guy at work that loves to sing his song songs out loud, the really excited guy that loves to come over to your desk or the excited guy that loves to shoot nerf guns at you from like across the office doesn't increase productivity it doesn't do anything it's just less expensive for the company commonly i will hear the excuse from a manager that's like oh well we have closed off spaces in our open office where you can go and focus shouldn't that be what i'm doing all day anyways not in in spurts of time like it's my job to focus and do my job i'm going to need to focus why is this not a default standard? And then if I want to, I can go out into an open area and talk to people. There's a company called WeWork. You might know them. They have co-working spaces that you can work at. So you pay money to go to a pretend office when you don't have to have an office, when you could just go to a coffee shop for free. I don't understand how, how WeWork's days in business really. But anyways, what they also do is they design office spaces. And what they've been doing is they've been designing open offices because it's a lot cheaper for the company. And so instead what they're doing is they're making these little fucking phone booths that you can go into if you need privacy. If you need privacy, I need privacy all day long and I need focus all day long. Here, let me show you a picture of this kind of bullshit that they're putting into offices and they're saying, well, if you really need to focus and clamp down, you can go here. That is my job to focus. So if you go to Google Images and you type WeWork phone booth, you'll get a bunch of these little pods. And it doesn't matter how cool it looks on the outside, it's still stupid. This is tiny. This is like a train car. You get more space than this when you're actually incarcerated. This one right here. This one has a giant ass clear door on it, but it also has a light bulb to let you know if it's in use or not. If the window is clear, I know if it's in use or not. So instead, how about you just make it a door and then the light goes on and hey, someone's in here, leave me alone. I don't understand if it's just supposed to be for one person to go hunker down and focus, then make it a door. I know that a lot of companies have glass door and glass meeting rooms because of harassment and it tries to like, you know, oh, people can see you, you don't want to do like, okay, I get that. But for these little personal spaces, just make that a thing. Oh, but yeah, this looks like great work culture to me. Let me just sit down here with my headphones on. If you already have a cubicle booth, why do you need headphones? Because open offices are just that loud. That is how ridiculous this shit is. Oh yeah, this looks like great working culture. Oh, we have an open office space right here and then just a little closed cell. Open office plans make bad bosses and bad managers inescapable. You cannot go anywhere when you have a bad boss at an open office. They can always see you and you can, well, that's not true, you can't see them because usually in an open office, everyone except for the executives is just put into this big pen of people and you just sit and work, except for the executives and the top people. They get their own privacy because I guess, you know, the legality of it, and they might have to talk about certain private things, but you don't, right? Because you're just an employee and that doesn't matter. Open office plans are also terrible when you're sick. When you sneeze and it goes across the room, there's no walls to stop it. At least cubicle can kind of stop it, but open offices are terrible when they're sick people. It's just, shit's just flying all over the room, just kind of hovers in the air for like 10 minutes. Sickness spreads like wildfire in an open office. It's like if you have ADHD, open offices are the worst because people are walking by, people are shooting their Nerf guns across the office, people are eating, spoons and stuff is hitting the sides of people's plates all the time. I think if you wanna go to an open office, great, go, go to an open office, but I think it should be optional. It should always be optional if you wanna go in, Go in. If you don't want to go in at all, you should never have to go in. That's how it is. If you don't trust me, you don't respect me, I don't want to work for you if you don't respect me. If you don't trust me, that's saying a lot about what you think of me right up front. If you don't want to let me go and you're like, well, we need you here. Why? Well, it, we're team collaboration. Have you ever played an online video game, sir? I've had squads and battlefield that do better than this piece of shit team. You know what I'm saying? Or just don't have an office and save all of that money and reinvest it into the business or give it to the employees as extra money. Do something besides make people come to an office. This is 2019 and in software, it is just not needed. How do you get out of this 
How do you get out of the cube? How do you get out of the open office? Well, the trick is not to apply to remote jobs, not to try and get remote. What you do is you take a regular job and then you just tell your manager, hey, uh, I'm not getting a lot done here. I can't really focus. I'm gonna work remote. And what you'll get like in return a lot is, why don't you just get some noise canceling headphones or we'll, we'll move you over here or you could do a couple days a week and that's fine. You take your couple days a week and you turn it into four days a week. If, if your boss is like, well, I'll let you do this. Are you going to let me? What you mean, let me? Is this kindergarten? Am I in first grade? You're allowing me to do what I want with my time? Well, I'll, I'll allow it. Okay, well, it's like the same when you have people that are taking time off requests. In my opinion, there's no time off requests. There's just time off notifications. Okay, I get that sometimes you, if everyone's trying to take the same day off, that won't work and the company can't be productive. I understand that, but... For a lot of these big companies, you still have time off requests and it doesn't, it's not going to matter if I'm there or not, but somehow I have to put in a request like and get an approval of if, if I want to, if I can take a vacation and then I have to be thankful because you approved my request to live my life with the pay time off that you're giving me. We'll allow you to work from, well, I'm going to work from home if I want to anyways. And if, if you need me in the office, you better have a good reason. And it's not that I'm antisocial. Okay. It's just that I like my privacy. I like to work when I want to work. I like to work how I want to work. If I want to have garlicky food on my desk, I'm going to have garlicky food on my desk. If I want to play the radio and blast music, I'm going to play the radio and I'm going to blast music because that's how I work. And it's not an office. It's never been in an office. At my last job, my cubicle was right next to the break room. So people were walking behind me all day long. Going in at lunchtime, boop, 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 turn on the microwave, brrr, and now I have to listen to that. I have headphones on. The, the volume is as high as it goes. Dude comes back, walks past me again. I see him walk past. Dude comes back again. I see him walk past and I hear the beep of the microwave oven and he pulls open his food. And then all of a sudden now I'm smelling his food because my, my cubicle is right next to the break room, but I can't go anywhere else because all the other cubes are full and I can't go into the meeting room because that's reserved at two o'clock and I'm going to have to leave. So by the time I get in there and get into the zone, I'm going to get kicked out by the, some other stupid meeting that they could have just done over Skype. It's just the worst. Offices are the worst. And I think unless you want to go, you shouldn't have to go. I don't know how many times I've said that in this video, but if you're not working remote and you're a software developer and they don't let you, if they give you some bull about how this is an on-site position and we really want our team members to collab, you can collaborate in 900 different ways. And if you come over here and think tapping me on my shoulder is collaborating, you are wrong, sir. Walking by me and having a conversation distracts me. It does not induce me with serendipitous, amazing ideas that benefit the company. You just want to micromanage everyone for the lowest price possible and offering... Uh, I remember one time I was at my job, at my office, I had the flu, and we didn't have sick days. All you had was vacation. If you had no vacation and you didn't come in, you're getting fired or disciplined or whatever bullshit that they hang over your head these days. But I had the flu. So I came in and I was like, look, man, I don't have any vacation. I'm still pretty new, right? And even if I did, I don't want to take a vacation day because I'm absolutely sick. Can I just go home and work? Because all I'm doing is that Excel and PowerPoint for the meeting that we have later in the week. Sorry, that's not part of the uh, company policy. It's just not in the handbook. But you can go uh, reserve a private room if you, if you need to do that. I'm like, you, you understand if I go into this private room, even though I'm sick, I'm going to get germs everywhere in this private room. And then when I get kicked out because the other people reserved it later in the day, they're all going to get sick. You understand that, right? You, you hear what I'm saying. Well, it's just not like, do you even have a fucking brain? Are you like, like, do you ever think for yourself? Like this doesn't make any sense, but it doesn't matter. It just doesn't matter to these companies. My recommendation is to get the job. But before you finalize that offer and sign it and send it in, always ask, can I, you know, and, you know, you think in maybe like 30 days, 90 days, I could have a couple days a week remote and we could work from there because I just get a lot more done. Usually they're like, oh yeah, okay. Cause you're not asking for it right away. You're asking for it later. You start asking for more and then you do more and more and more until you negotiate yourself out of the office completely. I've seen some companies that are so backwards on remote. They don't even understand how backwards it is. If you come to the office, they don't count the commute time towards work and, and same with leaving. But if you work remote, they don't care. So if you're going to force people to come into the office and not count their commute, that's stupid. That's just stupid because I could be thinking about what I'm going to do at work in my car while I'm sitting in traffic. I just think remote is the future. And unless you want to go, 
or unless you have to be there, you shouldn't go. You can go to weworkremotely.com and apply to those jobs. Just be aware that they're gonna be really competitive and the only way to stand out for remote jobs, especially new in the industry, is how you apply. It's not your resume, it's not your projects, it's how you apply because they need to be able to trust you. How do they know that you're not just gonna play video games, you know, or just go go do nothing. You can also try remoteok.io, flex jobs, that doesn't really work. They make you pay for the same jobs that are posted on we work remotely and remote okay they just aggregate the two together and they make you pay for it it's pretty stupid there's also stack overflow that you can use with a little perks section anyways that's my two cents guys uh, i would recommend that if you're in an office you know stand your ground a little bit go talk to your boss about hey can i have a couple days i've been here for xyz amount of time and I, I get more done when i'm at home and you know we'll just start with a couple days a week and then we'll, we'll negotiate it later or maybe instead of getting a raise every year or doing like an annual review and you know you're gonna do good don't ask for more money just ask to not have to go into the office trade something to not have to go into the office I promise you'll be a lot happier if you're one of those dudes like well I like the office and I like being social well then you're the person that I'm talking about that's like throwing the frisbee past my head while I'm like deep in code like I understand that there are social butterflies but there are also people that are trying to work so you can be social after work but while I'm there let me get my shit done Alright, that's it. That's all I have to say in this video. I'll see you in the next one.